Welcome to the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. I am your teacher and host, Eddie Hyatt. So glad you've joined me today as we continue our study in Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. This letter is jam-packed with powerful truths about salvation, about Jesus, and what he has accomplished for us through his death and his glorious resurrection. Today we are picking up at chapter 2, verse 19. We're going to talk about apostles and prophets and about the the foundation of the church. There is a a very serious uh, heresy, error, that is being taught in charismatic circles today that contemporary, modern, apostles and prophets are the foundation of the church. Now, I believe in modern-day prophets and apostles. Uh, I'll have to say, though, that I am very skeptical of anyone who presents themselves with a title in front of their name, apostle so-and-so or prophet so-and-so. And the reason is Jesus clearly admonished us not to be using honorific titles in front of our names that set us apart and elevate us above other believers. Let me just read that to you over in Matthew chapter 23. Very powerful, very clear. Matthew chapter 23. And uh, Jesus was rebuking the religious leaders in Israel of his day. And he says in Matthew 23, verse 5, he says, But all their works they do to be seen by men or by people. They're trying to impress people. And that's exactly what I think when I see somebody presenting themselves as apostle so-and-so or prophet so-and-so. They're trying to impress people. But all their works they do to be seen by people. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places at feasts. In other words, they, they wear distinctive clothing to set themselves apart. They love the best places at feasts. They love uh, the reserved seating. They love to sit at the head table. The best seats in the synagogue. Greetings in the marketplaces and to be called by men, rabbi, rabbi. In other words, they loved the titles. He says, but you, now these were the titles that were popular and current in Jesus' day. Now today he would use titles that are popular, you know, in the church today. He goes on and says, but you do not be called rabbi for one is your teacher. The Christ, that is the Messiah, and you are all brethren. That is the Greek word Adelphoi that means literally means brothers and sisters. In other words, he's saying, you're all brothers and sisters. You're on the same level. So don't be calling. Don't be adopting these honorific titles that set you up on a pedestal. And do not call anyone on earth your father. For one is your Father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called teacher. And, and, and the Greek word there, in some translations, translated as leader or mentor. And do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humble. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Okay, so this is this this is where Jesus uh, admonishes those first disciples, those are early apostles, to avoid adopting titles, honorific titles that would exalt them above others. And you will not find any place in the New Testament where, in any of Paul's letters, where they use any of these. Uh, designations as titles. Yes, they will identify Paul in his letters, not every time, but it's at, at certain times uh, for specific reasons. He will identify himself as Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. But you will never see any place where anyone is called apostle so-and-so or prophet so-and-so. And so they were very careful to carry out 
the admonition of Jesus concerning this. Now, in, in, in this heresy that we're talking about, it is based on a misunderstanding and misinterpretation of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. And uh, we'll start reading at verse 19. It says, now there, Paul says, now therefore you, and he's writing to the Gentiles in Ephesus, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You've been brought into God's family. You're part of his household. You now rub shoulders with the likes of Moses and Elijah. You're, you're, you're fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Now, verse 20 is the one. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, those who misinterpret this, they say, well, there, look, it says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Uh, I want to point something out. There's, there's several things here that will show you that he's talking about uh, Jesus Christ being the foundation. Apostles and prophets, I'm going to say this up front, and then I'm, I'm going to uh, prove it to you from Scripture. Apostles and prophets are referring to the Old and New Testaments, to the revelation of Jesus in the Old and New Testaments. Prophets refers to the Old Testament. Apostles refers to the revelation that the uh, the apostolic witness of Jesus Christ. Now, think about this for a moment. In Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 13 through 18, Jesus asked his disciples one day, said, Who do people say that I, the Son of Man, am? They say, Well, some say you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Some say you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. He says, But who do you say that I am? And Peter said, You are the Christ. By the way, the word Christ means Messiah. Uh, it's translated from the Greek word Christos, and Christos was the Greek counterpart to the Hebrew Messiah. So anytime you see the word Christ, you can substitute the word Messiah. Peter said, you're the Messiah. You're the one we've been looking for. You're the one the Old Testament prophets spoke about. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Verily I send you that you are uh, Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now, there is a play on the words in Greek, the words Peter and rock. Jesus said to him, uh, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, that I am the Messiah, the Son of the living God, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now, Peter and rock, Peter means rock in Greek, the Greek word tetros, and refer to a little rock, a little stone, a pebble. But the Greek word tetra referred to a massive stone, the kind of massive bedrock that builders in those days would seek to find, to build, and to erect a building on. And Jesus said to Peter, I say unto you that you are Petros, you're a little rock, but the revelation you have had of who I am is a Petra. And on this revelation of who I am, I am going to build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Wow, isn't isn't that isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? So the church is built on the revelation of who Jesus is. Peter, one of the preeminent first apostles. Jesus said, "You're a little rock," <laughs> and and none of us today are more than a little rock in the house of God. There is one foundation stone, and his name is Jesus. Now, let me, we, we're going to have to carry this over. But let me go ahead, and I'll, we'll wind this one up with um, what Paul said. That was Peter. Now, that was Peter. And let me share with you what Paul said along these lines over in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. And Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, a church that he founded. He went to that pagan city 
the first one to preach the gospel there. And a, and a, a church was birthed. And when I say church, I don't mean an organization, a building. I mean a, a community of believers, a gathering of people who put their faith in Jesus. And he's reminding them of this. And in uh, verse chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, he says, According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Now he's going to tell us what the foundation was he laid in Corinth. Now he was an apostle. I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? No other foundation can anyone lay. Don't let anybody tell you that they're, they and their ministry or whatever is, is a foundational ministry. No, there's only one foundational ministry or person, and it's the person of Jesus Christ. No other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, in closing, now we'll pick, pick up on this tomorrow, but in closing, let me just mention that in that passage there in Ephesians uh, chapter 2, I'm turning over, over to it again, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, the words apostles and prophets is in the genitive case in, in Greek grammar. That is the case that shows possession. It does not equate one with the other. It shows possession. It's like saying uh, the, the, the car of Eddie Hyatt. The car and I have a relationship, but I'm not the car and the car is not me. And when Paul says, having been built on the foundation of, in the genitive case, the apostles and prophets, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that the foundation is equated with the apostles and prophets or that the apostles and prophets are equated with the foundation. Yes, they have a relationship, but as we will clearly point out in tomorrow's session, the apostles and prophets is a way that Paul is using to refer to the testimony of Jesus, which is the purpose and the goal of the Old or New Testaments. Wow. Hey, God bless you all. I'm Eddie Hyatt. Uh, if you would like to read more about this, I have a book. It's it's available only on my website. It's not available on um, on Amazon. It's only available on my, my website. It is called Pursuing Power. Now, it's not talking about pursuing spiritual power. It's talking about how, uh, how throughout church history, it documents how throughout church history, there have been pursuits of power in the name of the apostolic. And these pursuits of power have divided and damaged the church. And so it is a book that will uh, clarify what a real apostle is and, uh, and what a false apostle looks like. And um, uh, anyone who claims to be the, that they are the foundation of the church, they are to be uh, related to carefully maybe completely avoided. Hopefully they're sincere and just need to be enlightened, but it indicates that there is an element of pride there and seeking to draw attention to themselves. And so pray for them and ask God to take them up and help them to realize uh, that there is only one foundation of the church, and that is Jesus Christ. Check out my website, Eddie Hyatt. Dot com. You'll find a lot of resources there that will be helpful to you, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.